What's up? <laughs> Look at this. We got a new segment just in time for Black History Month. Today, we are joined by Mr. Austin Stevenson. He is the Chief Innovation Officer at Vertosa, one of the most interesting private companies in the cannabis space. Austin, welcome to Benzinga Cannabis Insider. Hey, thanks, guys. What's up? Hey, Austin. Good to see you, man. How are you doing? Awesome. I'm rocking and rolling. Happy Black History Month. It's amazing to be here. Thanks for having me. Happy Black History Month, man. Yeah. Let's get started, man. Tell us a little bit about Vertosa. What do you do? And am I pronouncing it correctly? Or is it Vertosa? What is it? <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it, brother. It, it's Vertosa. Um, and, you know, we are a cannabis chemistry company. Uh, the real simple way of what we do is, you know, we take cannabis oils, uh, you know, anything from distillates, isolates, live resins, live rosins. Yum. We turn them into fast acting liquid emulsions uh, and powders. Uh, and this is what we this is what we sell. So we sell, you know, the, the technology that's inside all these awesome infused beverages. So anything from, you know, infused PBR to some awesome stizzy fast acting gummies, these like plus CBN gummies, like anything that has fast acting then you know, we make it happen uh, with our technology. That's super, super interesting. So the, you know, you don't hear much about powder. So, you know, looking at these different uh, products that you make between oil and powder, does it take completely different equipment or you, can you do that pretty seamlessly with what you have? I, I guess with one, one machine, I, I mean, honestly, obviously I'm clueless here. So yeah, <laughs> no worries, man. I mean, you know, manufacturing ingredients um, requires all different types of technologies. Um, so, you know, where we focused our business is on nanotechnology, you know, taking oil, something that doesn't mix into water and turn it into a liquid inherently, you know, a water so that it can be compatible and stable and ultimately work and provide a predictable, repeatable, consistent experience in beverage. Now, a lot of these beverage folks, um, you know, want to build their product portfolio or their product catalog. And so they want to go into some dry goods, like imagine, you know, like a Kool-Aid or a dry powder mm -hmm. version of a beverage, like a Snapple or, or, you know, kind of pour in type of application. Well, to make a powder, you do have to use a different technology. Um, so it's not the same technology that we use to make with the liquid. Uh, instead with the powder, we have a few different pathways to get there. Um, you know, some of it use techniques like cool drying. Some use techniques like spray drying. Some things use things like substrate application. I mean, I can nerd out on all the chemistry all, all day long, but ultimately oh, yeah. to answer your question, yes, it's different technology, different application, different function. Uh, but that's, that's what we get to do all day long is create that, that, that tech. That's one, so one question that, that always, you know, pops up in the chat uh, whenever we, we, we talk to someone in the beverage world is how do you make cannabis water soluble, right? Uh, because up to very recently, you know, all of our knowledge told us, okay, the only way to consume cannabis orally without smoking it is, you know, using some kind of, of, of fat, right? Or, or grease yeah. or whatever, right? It's butter or milk or right. And, 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 you know, the, 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 the common knowledge was, you know, cannabis is not water soluble, which of course you've changed. Can you explain in layman's terms how you, you've done that? Yeah, I can. Well, I can try. Um, I am. I'm a big cannabis nerd. So let's see how let's see how I do. Um, you know, first of all, Javier, you're exactly right. Um, you know, cannabis uh, is a fat. Uh, it's an oil. Uh, it's fat soluble. So historically, you know, folks have had to mix cannabis into butters and oils. And that's ultimately how they get their their edible experience, because um, you know, some folks just don't want to smoke. Um, and so they want, they, but they do want to consume cannabis. And so they'll put it into a butter, they'll cook it, uh, and then ultimately create like a cookie or brownie. Uh, but as many of us, myself included, I've had a bad brownie experience uh, oh, where yeah. <laughs> I had the brownie, I had the cookie, you know, it, I didn't feel anything for an hour. Um, I was mm -hmm. hungry uh, or the chocolate tasted super good. So I had another one. And then two hours later, smack, like I am on the couch out for yeah. the next two, three days. Um, the class, so, bro, it isn't working, bro. You know, yeah, it's like, it's not working. It's it's boom. Oh, it works. Oh, and you're, you're on the ground. So, you know, I had, I had that experience and that's the problem that we wanted to solve, right? We mm -hmm. wanted to solve for that unpredictability. Um, we wanted to solve for the application that goes beyond just, just fats uh, and, and baked goods. And so, 
we know that the consumer is moving to more healthy wellness you know, type of application. The most ubiquitous form factor of what, what, what people do every single day is, you know, pick up a cup and, and drink something. And so we need to figure out how to take oil and, you know, put it into water. And so to do that, um, you know, the, the technology in itself is not solubility. Because um, solubility says that from a chemical standpoint, you're going to take a compound and it's going to blend or mix into that compound. Something changes, right? Like salt is soluble. It, it, it chemically, it changes in when it gets into the liquid. What we do instead is that we want to take an oil, something that is fat soluble, and we want to make it dispersible uh, in a liquid. So instead of like changing the chemical structure, uh, we intain, retain the integrity of the compound. So you're getting true cannabinoids and we retain that and then we just encapsulate it. Um, so what we yeah. do in encapsulation tech is that we take an oil and we apply a lot of energy. That's the nano part. So the nanotechnology is the energy. We apply a whole bunch of energy. And then what that energy does is break down that oil into a bunch of small pieces. And then we take those small pieces and wrap them in what are called emulsifiers. And these emulsifiers are in all your food um, you know, today, like ice cream as an example. The reason you get that nice, clean, even scoop of ice cream when you crack open a thing of briars is because of emulsifiers. Um, huh. You know, it's very common. You know, you see on like salad dressings, for example, emulsifiers uh, are like sunflower lecithin. These are all things to make oil suspend in water better. And yeah. so the benefit um, to you as a consumer more than anything else uh, is the, the feeling and the experience. It becomes faster. It becomes more predictable. It becomes more consistent. So no more bad brownie, bad cookie experience. Uh, instead, you know, you can have a fast acting, predictable, you know, ex cannabis experience with the beverage because of this nanotechnology. And the analogy that I give, you know, folks half the time, it's like thinking about your, your body chemistry uh, and the fact that, you know, for you to feel cannabis, the cannabinoids have got to get through your brain blood barrier. And if you think about your brain blood barrier as a chain link fence, right? Um, had that brownie or that cookie is like taking a big old beach ball and trying yeah. to get it through the chain link <laughs> fence. It, it's going to, you're going to throw it and it's going to bounce back. And that's because your body's got to metabolize it. It's got to work it through. It's got to break it down. And that's why it takes an hour or two because your body has to go to work. It puts a bunch of pressure on your liver to process that beach ball and then get it through. And then, it, then it hits you and all at once like, boom, I got knocked out by a freaking beach ball. <laughs> uh, so instead, we apply high energy nanotechnology and we turn that beach ball, that oil, that big old ball into a pile of gravel or a handful of marbles. And if you take that you know, pile of gravel or handful of marbles, you throw that through the chain link fence, they're gonna pass through. So they're gonna get through quicker because we're taking something really big and made it really small so it absorbs quicker so that it's more bioavailable and faster acting. So therefore you're not waiting an hour or two hours. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. You start to feel it. You understand exactly how much you put into your body. So if you take this, you know, 10 milligram can of PBR, if you drink half of it, you know you've consumed five milligrams, wait 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, I like that feeling. Okay, I'll drink a little bit more. I'll sip on it. Oh, I loved it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm high at 60 minutes and now I want another one. I can make it sessionable. I can have a couple. I can share it with friends and now it's safe. It's reliable. It's consistent. You know, that's ultimately, you know, what we do and why we do it. This Can might answer be your question. Yo, I think that was a great answer for Hobby's question, but <laughs> this might be the most interesting science class I've ever had, man. And, and like, props to you for making this understandable to, uh, in layman's terms, because that was awesome. Um, looking at the depth of your market, real quick, and, and who you play with. Obviously, you have some big partners on the board. Um, and Nano Motion Technology is obviously picking up steam. If it, you know, it probably has been more popular than we realize. Um, but can you name a few uh, of the big time players that you work with in this space? Because obviously there are several. Yes. Yeah. No, we are so grateful uh, to our brand partners. You know, we like to look at ourselves as the Intel inside. So, you know, you're not going to see brands, you know, with Vertoso on the front label. You know, it's essentially 
you know, like, like one of them, PBR, Pabst Blue Ribbon, you know, you know, you turn this on the back and you kind of look for infused by Vertoso on the back, right? Nice. And so we're that Intel inside, but PBR was a big, you know, traditional CPG company that really understood the direction that functional beverages are, are going, you know? So they're like, look, we're going to launch a cannabis beverage. So that's, that's one of our great beverage partners that we like. We also have uh, Lagunitas Hi-Fi Hops, um, you know, that many people are familiar with, an awesome, awesome partner. Um, you know, and then a whole host of others. I, I was going to move this down. It's like House of Saka on there. They have this cool. amazing, awesome, awesome, like mimosa, oh, yeah, sparkling, you know, premium beverage line. It's, it's great. And they're using strain specific stuff. So they have mimosa terpenes in here uh, from live resin to really give a sophisticated adult type of perspective on this beverage. Um, and then... You may be familiar with the, all the good folks uh, on Delta 8. That's really hot right now. And so the team mm-hmm. at Wonder is an awesome, awesome, awesome product. Um, and they've recently launched their higher vibe. So you're getting 10 milligrams of Delta 9 THC plus 10 milligrams of Delta 8 THC, Ooh, uh, <laughs> all derived from cannabis. So like the natural stuff. So not not the stuff that you're seeing at gas, gas stations where it's like chemically altered CBD. No, this is the real deal. Holy field in terms of a Delta eight, Delta nine. Um, and then beyond beverage, you know, we've been having a ton of fun, uh, in gummies. Uh, gummies have been awesome, fast acting, rapid onset gummies. And so, you know, one of my faves right now, uh, is the, the new release by plus, um, plus launched their dual action, uh, sleep gummies. So they have both the fast acting tech in there and the long lasting distillate in there. So that, you know, you're getting the CBN and the THC, it's hitting you fast, and then it's keeping you for, uh, to sleep longer. So get you to bed quick, keep you keep you in bed longer with this like dual action technology. Um, you know, love this plus product, highly recommend it for, for all those that are out there. Uh, and then a whole host of others, you know, we have, you know, sauces that we infuse. Um, we have like, you know, the folks at Potley, they do the hot sauce, Sriracha. And, you know, we've been able to really help so many other folks, like, take their ideas uh, and bring them to market. So um, that's Very just good. a few to, to, to name. And, you know, it's, it, it's awesome working with every single one of them. Very, very cool. Got one last question uh, to keep the segment uh, relatively short, right? Black History Month, right? We, we do yeah. know, and we've heard this again and again, uh, Blacks and Latinos are four times more likely to get arrested for cannabis possession in the U.S., even though consumption levels are very different. But guess what? Racism, uh, you know, systemic structural racism goes beyond just arrest, beyond the police, beyond punitive systems, it, it, and it permeates the entire corporate culture, right? If you look at black ownership in, 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 in the cannabis industry, it's ridiculously low. And if you look at, for black people in C-suites in the cannabis industry, it's ridiculously low. You know, you're one of very few people who are chief blah, blah, blah officer, right, at a, at a big cannabis company, right? Yes, so, sir. I mean, how do you feel about this? Of course, angry and upset, but like, you know, we'll elaborate a little bit. How do you feel and what do you think can be done? What can we do as individuals and what can we do as companies and as an industry? Yeah, well, number one, I appreciate um, you asking the question um, and the acknowledgement of kind of, you know, where, uh, the current state of the market is, um, in particular for, for black and brown uh, and minority communities. <laughs> you know, to keep it light, I've always been the token in the room. Uh, it always seems that way, right? Um, there's always like, you know, the, the one black guy at, at the table. And, you know, it's really just the result of, of access uh, or, or lack thereof. You know, I come from a blue collar working class family. You know, my mom was a firefighter. My dad was a construction worker. Um, but you know, they, they, they worked hard and we worked hard to, you know, put me through school and, you know, allow me to rub elbows with, with all type of folks. Um, and so that in itself comes with a level of privilege of having access to understanding. And I think that the reason why there's, there's lack of representation uh, at the C-suite in terms of ownership is really just, just access. Um, you know, yes, there's been a war on drugs and a lot of folks will say it's a, it's a war on black and brown and poor people. Uh, that's really what it, it comes down to. It goes beyond race and it's it becomes socioeconomic as well. Um, when it comes to ownership uh, and it comes to leadership, um, a lot of that is just access to capital. Um, you know, it's the, the fact of the matter is that when you're coming from black, brown and poor communities, um, you don't, 
have the access to a friends and family round that exactly. is required. Well, I see this so many times I've said it on the show, right? There's two things that I learned from writing this book for Entrepreneur Me that called Start Your Own Cannabis Business. I spoke to a hundred different people in America who had successful cannabis businesses. And I learned two things. One, you can start your own business. No one had ever told me this. And, and my parents <laughs> like prepared me for success, but success meant like making it to the top, like at a corporate structure or something like that. Never starting your own thing. That was not in the like in the in the in the cards number 1 and number yeah. 2 was you know um even 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 further is you know friends and family and many of these people told me okay i i you know raised a friends and family round just like 1 million dollars and i'm like who the hell are these friends and family <laughs> right and I, he's got an introduction <laughs> who are these rich uncles right and so <laughs> that's that's the that's the biggest the biggest problem is access to capital because there's no lack of ideas and creativity in cannabis um, but where there is lack of execution and, and capital. And so, you know, how can we make this better? Well, number one, we have to acknowledge it. Number two, we've got to take action. Um, and so, you know, I, I serve, um, number one, as an advisor on the Ease Momentum Committee. And so as part of the advisor committee, Ease is doing a great job, you know, taking funds, putting the money where their mouth is and investing uh, into black and brown uh, entrepreneurs uh, without taking equity, true grants. So the application and functional ap application of grants and that equity is awesome um, because that is literally giving people money to start their businesses uh, and not taking anything. It's all giving and gifting. It's amazing. Um, secondarily, it's, you know, there's an, an importance to other folks that are like me, uh, minority uh, entrepreneurs, uh, leaders uh, to lead by example. Uh, and so I'm a big believer in, you know, um, bringing up as I build. Um, taking people with me on the journey. If you get to the mountaintop and you're alone, that sucks. Uh, I want a whole team of people with me, right? And so that's part of the reason how why the reason why we created Fertosa is to be a platform for innovation. You know, we said, look, mm -hmm. we're going to focus on being the ingredient manufacturer. Super simple, boring B two B. You know, I'm going to sell you sugar, uh, but that sugar is the critical component to realizing a lot of these, these brands' uh, dreams and opportunities. So if you have an idea as a beverage or you have an idea as a sauce, I'll give you an example. You know, this is you know, one of our good friends, um, you know, Tess Taylor uh, from Saucy. And Tess said, I have an idea. I'm gonna go savory, not sweet. You know, um, she's a black yeah. woman from Texas. She came up with an idea. She's like, I wanna launch this. I'm like, great, you can use our technology um, and I'm gonna help you get there. And I'm gonna introduce you to five people that can help you raise money. And I'm going to introduce you to five people that are going to help you manufacture your product. And, and that's it. It's just like collaboration is the new competition. Just, you know, if you, <laughs> you, you, you open up your hands to the universe to, to both give and receive, then, then it, it works. Just, you know, work with others. You don't have to go out and boil the ocean, but just make it an intro. Um, you know, just, you know, giving someone an opportunity, just crack and open the door like that. That's what really matters because the right entrepreneur with the right motivation and right intention, they're going to see that crack in the door and they're going to bust right through. Heck, if they mm -hmm. see a window, they might bust through the window and get, and get there to make it happen um, because, because that, that, that's what it needs to be. So, yeah, I, I say all, all that it's, you know, it's capital, it's access, uh, it's collaboration, um, it's, you know, functionally and tactically the use of grants uh, is, is awesome. Um, you know, those, those are some things that we can do. And, and those that have, um, you know, or those that have, it's, it's, it's time to give back. Um, you know, I think it's Maya Angelou that said, if you, if you know better, uh, then you do better. Um, and I think that, that is what's really, really critical is so if you, if you know, there's a problem, uh, then be a part of this, be a part of the solution. Uh, don't, don't perpetuate the problem. Amen. Austin, right. thank you so much. I mean, honestly, really appreciate your, your forthrightness there. Uh, Javier, great question. Something that we need to be discussing more, and I hope we can come back on uh, and discuss improvements <laughs> that we've made and the progress we've made in this industry rather sooner rather than later. Um, but that being said, Austin, you're obviously doing incredible things at Vertosa. Obviously, no shortage of success. Um, please keep us updated. We'll get you back on soon. I mean, we ran way over, and I want to keep the whole thing uh, going. It's been an incredible discussion. We appreciate you being here. Such an honor. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Javier. It's, it's awesome. Appreciate you guys providing the platform um, and look forward to more. Any way I can be helpful, feel free to reach out.